Hello, this is Kala here. Uh, I, so I shall write to you in a couple of days. Thank you for everything, for hosting me in your house. And uh, I shall speak to you uh, in a couple of days. I started playing the violin when I was uh, two and a half to be exact, but then, uh, I mean, regularly from the age of three. After three, within two, three years, I shifted to Hindustani violin, which is a North Indian tradition. My grandfather decided that uh, I must play the North Indian tradition. and. So by the time I was uh, seven years old and started realizing what was happening, I was so much into music and I liked what I was doing and stuck to it. Probably when I was 13 or 14 years old, it was Ustad Zakir Hussain who made me think by telling me, he heard me and he said, you're playing well, you're playing, everything that you're doing is fantastic, but uh, I would like to advise you on one thing, that if you played like your aunt, why would people listen to you? There should be something different in your playing. So he was the one who set me thinking that, yes, I must do something different. And uh, what did you do to achieve that? Uh, I started hearing a lot of other musicians. And uh, one musician who, who really impressed me from the time when I was a child was Pandit Jisraj. And, uh, started learning from him and I felt his style which had a lot of the emotive content in his music was best suitable for my violin to express. It has a lot of emotive content and very ornamentative and beautiful. Aesthetically I would call it the best. <laughs> 
Was it easy to to go to him and ask him for lessons? Um, it was easy because uh, in 1982, when I did my, when I was first introduced by my aunt to the audiences in the north of India, uh, it was Pandit Jasraj, uh, to who was instrumental in having my first, uh, I would call a dress rehearsal amongst the, a selective audience of Kanojas in Bombay. So I call him Mama or Uncle. So And, and he calls you uh, his daughter, eh? Yes, he does. He calls me his musical daughter. He says he has two daughters. One is his blood daughter and I'm his musical daughter. So I have a very great rapport with him. So it was not a problem for me to go and ask him if he would accept me as his disciple. So, uh, and in 89 I did that. <laughs> parents, grandparents, everything taken care of, good school and stuff. But after my dad died, we realized we had no one uh, to take care of things for us. No, mm. no one to support us. And we'd have to work our way up in life. And that's when me and my brother, we started taking life seriously. And the struggle began to make a life for ourselves, name for ourselves. I accepted two concerts on the same day, forgetting that uh, I accepted My brother lives in Australia. He is doing very well out there. Yeah. I live in Bombay with my mother. And uh, I have a nice place in Bombay. A nice three-bedroomed apartment. So. That's it. Okay, okay. Bye. For me, music is my religion. It's my prayer. It's uh, meditation for me. It's everything for me. What I want to achieve is to play the violin in a way which nobody has done and strive for the best. You know, you know about scales in music. You also, in Western classical music also, you have major and the minor scales. Like that in India, we have a number of scales. They were called tarts. And from these tarts came these ragas, which also is an equivalent scale. But, in this, but this is more musical than the regular scale. I mean, when you sing the scale, you know you've got into a melody. 
An amazing ability to uh, develop a piece, and sometimes the the variations are very subtle. And to uh, a lesser trained ear, they might think that oh, she's repeating things. But but actually, if you listen carefully, the the development is so subtle. Uh, and when you get involved with the music, it's just incredibly beautiful, and you can get so absorbed into the recording uh, and listen to it again and again and again, and get so much out of it. My colleague Alpesh, uh, who is the executive producer at Sense, uh, uh, he says uh, she's the queen of variation. Uh, these musicians, it is very much a, a dynasty of, of violin players. M. Rajam has had such a huge effect on, on the world of violin, certainly in India. And obviously uh, Kala, uh, being a, a member of that family, brings uh, another element. Uh, you know, she's specialised a little more in the North Indian style, but has been fed by the South Indian style also. I think N. Rajam is, is uh, a person who's, I think, deeply introspective. Her playing is beautifully sensitive, it's very, very thoughtful, but not hugely exuberant. And I think Carla has uh, the qualities that I've just described about N. Rajam. But I think she has an extra layer of exuberance that makes her, her playing very, very special. I, I think uh, she's matured now as a musician and uh, it could be said that she's the, uh, you know, the greatest violinist of, of North India at this time. The songs, yeah. I play on the violin and I improvise re remembering the song. You, the yeah. words of the composition. So rana ra muni jana. This is the line. So rana ra muni jana. Some variations. Muni jana. So ra. So I do all the things exactly like that. <laughs> Since I play the vocal style, I learn the compositions and I try to express through the words of the composition on the instrument. All this is in one breath. Mm -hmm. So it's not possible to do it in a bow, but the way I change bows, you won't know that I have changed a bow. So, when I change bows, I play it in such a manner that nobody knows that I'm changing bows. Yeah. So it sounds like it's in one breath and the other thing is the fingering which I do so when I shift from one note to the other this is the change I'm doing that's what I'm doing 
It sounds like it's just one finger moving, but I'm changing. of my playing. Anirankar. When they sing this tan in a in a mm -hmm. it's all done in one breath, right? effect of ah, 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 like that yeah. so but i'm changing bows but nobody knows today when i play music is so abstract like each note you cannot say where is this note you cannot see the place of the note the placings of the notes but in my mind i can see them like this note is here, this note, this is the place of this note. If that is possible for me, in, even in this abstract form, that's new to Pandit Jisa, that's the amount of music he's given me. He's made me see the notes, their place. So he gave you deep, new insights. Oh yes, totally. <laughs> 